Hello everyone, I am Adrita. Welcome back to my study room. In this video, we are going to do the part 2 of the chapter cell structure and function from class 8 NCERT science. In the previous video, we already talked about the discovery of cell, how cell was discovered. Um, and diversity in cell means how cell vary in shape, size and number. In this video, we are going to talk about the parts of cell. We are going to learn about what does the cell contains, what are the parts of the cell. A single cell is made up of many different parts. Okay, so you can see this is a cell. There are many different parts in a single cell. So the main three parts of a cell are cell membrane, cytoplasm, and nucleus. We're going to learn about all of this in details. So there are three main parts of a cell. They are cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. So what are the cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus? Cell membrane is the membrane that covers the cell. You can see this. There is a membrane that protects the cell or gives shape to the cell. So this membrane is cell membrane. Cytoplasm is the jelly-like substance that is present in the cell and nucleus. In every single cell, you will see a dense structure, um, generally in the middle of the cell. So this structure is the nucleus. We are going to learn about all of these three in details. So now, the cytoplasm contains, smaller, uh, contains various smaller parts called cell organelles. So, like a human body is made up of many different types of organs, right? In the same way, a single cell is made up of different organelles. What are they known as? They are known as cell organelles. These are the organelles. Mitochondria. This is an example of an organelle. Mitochondria. Ribosomes. Plastids. Here you can see endoplasmic reticulum. We are going to learn about this afterwards. So these are the organelles. Means the organs of the cell are organelles. So the cytoplasm contains various smaller parts called cell organelles. So these are the parts of cell which now we are going to learn about in details. Okay. Example, mitochondria, ribosome, plastids, etc. There are a lot of organelles. We are going to learn about them. So first, we are going to start with cell membrane. Okay, so as I said, cell membrane is the outer part of a cell, right? It is also known as the plasma membrane. So we can also call cell membrane as the plasma membrane, okay? Now what is the function of this cell membrane? It separates cells from one another, okay? And also from the outside environment. Suppose um, if the cell membrane would not be there, then what would happen? All the organelles that I told you, they would get mixed up, right? Of two different cells, they would get mixed up. So that is what cell membrane do. It separates one cell from another. It's similar to a building. All the rooms are separated, right? By certain walls. So you know the kitchen is separated from the bedroom or it is separated from the bathroom by a wall. So the same in cell, the cell membrane acts as a separation between two, two different cells and also for protecting it again outside environment, right? If the cell membrane would not be there, then the cell would not be protected, right? So it also protects it from the outside environment, okay? And it also gives shape to the cell, okay? If the cell membrane would not be there, then there would not be any definite shape. They would not have any definite shape. So it is another point, uh, another importance of cell membrane, that is it gives shape to the cell. Now, as cell membrane is there, but still some necessary particles need to go inside and outside the cells, right? So yes, cell membrane allows the movement of substances. It does. It allows certain necessary substances only. It is permeable and it allows water, minerals and certain necessary substances to pass through the membrane. Whether it is from um, outside of the cell to the inside or from inside of the cell to the outside, it allows movement of necessary particles. Okay. As you can see over here, this is how a cell membrane looks like. 
okay this is how it looks like um from here the substances can be transferred from the outside to the inside or vice versa so this is how a cell membrane looks like so this is the cell membrane now cell membrane is the outermost layer of animal cell then why not plant cells because plant cells have another plant cells of another additional layer after the cell membrane that is known as the cell wall okay so um yes plants do have cell membrane but they have another additional layer that is known as the cell wall so let's learn about cell wall now cell wall is the outermost boundary of a plant cell yes um for an animal cell it the outermost was the cell membrane but for a plant cell it is the cell wall cell wall is absent in animal cells yes you will never find a cell wall in animal cells I mean suppose in humans in we humans do not have any cell walls only plant cells have cell wall and cell wall is the outermost layer of the plant cell and it is made up of cellulose okay this is a very important point the cell wall is made up of cellulose now why is another additional layer cell membrane is there so why do the plants need another additional layer known as cell wall because um plants cannot move right so to withstand the storms the rain um the heat of the sun or everything plants need protection plants need a lot more protection than animals right because they cannot move so to give protection and to give them rigidity the cell wall is present cell wall gives shape and rigidity to the cell the plant cells are hard right if you touch the bark of the tree then you will see how hard the plant is right so that is what the cell wall does it gives the rigidity to a cell to a plant cell and it also gives shape yes you can see this is the cell and this is the cell wall so it gives shape to the plant cell so we have learned about cell membrane and cell wall so cell membrane is present in both plant cells and animal cells but cell wall is absent in animal cells and present in plant cells so animal cells have only the cell membrane but plant cells have both cell membrane and after that a cell wall okay so this was about cell membrane and the cell wall now let's move to the next main part of the cell that is cytoplasm okay so what is the cytoplasm um a cell uh, we learned right now that a cell uh, consists of a cell membrane right it protects the cell but have you ever wondered what is inside the cell we learned that there are organelles right like mitochondria ribosomes so where are these organelles present are they just present like this there is nothing else no the entire cell has jelly like substance it is certain jelly like substance that is present between the cell membrane and the nucleus what is the nucleus i told you this dense structure generally in the middle of the cell that is the nucleus so the jelly like substance that is present between the nucleus and the cell membrane you already learned cell membrane this jelly like substance the yellow thing that you can see in this picture it is the cytoplasm okay so cytoplasm is how it is jelly like and the organelles of cells are present in the cytoplasm the organelles we learned right mitochondria ribosomes endoplasmic reticulum so where are these organelles present they are present in this jelly like substance which is known as cytoplasm okay so this was about cytoplasm now the next part is nucleus and the nucleus is a very very important part of a cell the nucleus is generally spherical in shape as you can see this is a single nucleus and it is located in the center of the cell as we saw over here see the nucleus is located in the center of the cell right so this nucleus is located in the center of the cell generally and it is also generally spherical in shape so and we learned that cell membrane separates one cell from another right 
In the same way, the nucleus also has a nuclear membrane that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. You can see in this picture, this is the nucleus and this is the cytoplasm. So this nucleus is separated from the cytoplasm by a membrane known as nuclear membrane. This is the nuclear membrane. Okay, you can see nuclear membrane. So in the same way as cell has a cell membrane, a nucleus has a nuclear membrane. And there is another part of a nucleus that is the nucleolus. What is nucleolus? In a nucleus, you will see a spherical dense body inside the nucleus. Okay, this is the nucleus and over here, there is a spherical body. That body is known as the nucleolus. Like nucleus is present in the center of the cell, right? In the same way, nucleolus is present in the center of the nucleus. Okay, so we learned about nuclear membrane and we learned about nucleolus. Okay, and this nucleus is spherical in shape. Okay, it is spherical in shape. It helps in protein synthesis. Synthesis of protein. Okay, so it helps in synthesis of protein. All right. Now, the nuclear membrane, in the same way as cell membrane, as I said, cell membrane allows substances to pass through them, right? In the same way, nuclear membrane also allows certain substances to pass through it, okay? And the nucleolus is generally spherical in shape. It helps in protein synthesis, in the synthesis of protein. And this nucleolus, if you see it through a microscope with higher magnification, then you will be able to see a nucleolus in the microscope okay now what is the importance of the nucleus nucleus is the control center of the cell it controls all the activities going on in the cell the organelles perform certain activities right so everything is controlled by the nucleus so you see how important nucleus is it is the control center of the entire cell it is the control center of all the activities going on in the cell now in addition there is another importance of nucleus a very important point it contains thread-like structures called chromosomes okay nucleus contains thread-like structures called chromosome what are chromosomes now you can see this x-like structure this is a single chromosome so what is the importance of chromosomes chromosomes contain genes what are genes they are the unit of inheritance in living beings we all inherit certain characteristics from our parents right suppose if um, my mother has black hair then maybe i would have black hair if my father has brown eyes then maybe i would end up having brown eyes right so um the children the offspring of parents they have certain similar characteristics to those of their parents right so from here we can conclude that the characteristics of the parents are passed to the offspring right so the this is inheritance okay we are inheriting certain characteristics from our parents this is inheritance and the unit of inheritance means how the characteristics are passed from the parent to the offspring. The unit of inheritance in living beings is G. Okay. Through these genes, the characteristics are passed on from parents to the offspring. Now, these, these chromosomes that are present in the nucleus, they contain these genes in the form of DNA. Okay. DNA. The full form of DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, the full form is deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, DNA. So these chromosomes contain these genes in the form of DNA. And what are these genes? These are the units of inheritance, right? Of hereditary inheritance. So these genes are responsible for the transfer of characters from the parents to the offspring as i told you these genes are responsible for the transfer of certain characters from the parents to the offspring these chromosomes contain these genes 
and the nucleus has these chromosomes and these chromosomes are thread-like structure okay they are thread-like structure now if you see in this photo see over here this is the cell right this is the cell and in this cell there is the nucleus this is the nucleus in the nucleus there are many chromosomes okay now this is a single chromosome this x like structure is the chromosome now these chromosomes contain genes in the form of dna what is the dna this is the dna dna double helix okay this is the dna and what are the genes over here see in the dna this green blue these are the genes okay so this is how the nucleus or the chromosome contains these genes this is the chromosome and if you magnify a single part of the chromosome then you will see that there are there are dna's over there and these dna's contain certain genes okay so this is another importance of nucleus as nucleus contains these chromosomes and these chromosomes contain genes which is the unit of inheritance means they, they, are the, they are responsible for the transfer of characteristics from the parents to offspring. So this is another important point of the nucleus. So this was the nucleus. Um, what are its importance? First it is the control center. It is the control center of our cell means um, it controls every activity that is happening in the cell and second it contains chromosomes that contains gene which are responsible for the transfer of characters from the parents to the offspring okay so nucleus is a very important part of a cell all right this entire content of a cell is known as the protoplasm what protoplasm actually protoplasm is the cytoplasm plus nucleus so the entire content inside the cell the cytoplasm with the organelles plus the nucleus the entire content is known as protoplasm all right this is a very important point another thing is that these chromosomes we can only see the chromosomes when the cell divides Cell division occurs right, one cell reproduces to form two cells and two cells to form four cells and like that. So when the cell divides, at that time only we can see these chromosomes. Okay, you can see these chromosomes only when the cell divides. So this was about nucleus. The three main parts of the cell are cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. In plants, there is an, another additional layer that is the cell wall the cell membrane is the outermost layer in the animal cell um, but in the plant cell there is another layer cell wall it is the outermost layer in the plant cell okay and cytoplasm is the jelly-like substance that is present inside the cells where all the organelles like mitochondria ribosomes um, plastids etc are present all right and the nucleus is present it is spherical in shape and it is present in the center generally in the center of the cell so these were the three main parts of a cell but there are other organelles right like mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum so we are going to learn about that in the next class in the next video about different organelles of a cell in the next video so this was for today we learned about these three main parts of the cell and um, we'll be back with the other organelles like mitochondria, plastids, endoplasmic reticulum, etc. Okay, so that video is also going to be very important. And this is for today. And if you like this video, then don't forget to like. And if you have any doubts, then please comment in the comment box below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on the subscribe button. Thank you.